Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to get into some more Star Trek The Original Series with Season 3, Episode 7. It's called Day of the Dove. The last couple episodes that we watched have been phenomenal. The Spectre of the Gun and Is There In Truth No Beauty. I loved both of those so much and I'm really excited. Season 3 is has just been so exciting for me for some reason. Like... I don't know it's you know we're getting close to the end every episode feels like a blessing like special like it almost never happened and now we have it and so far I'm really enjoying the season with like a couple of them were kind of eh, but for the most part I really enjoyed all of these episodes and even the ones that are like eh, are still like they have some really good stuff in there just a quick update to keep holding myself accountable and hopefully you guys will help me with that as well for the very few of you who probably even care about this I finished um the book that I told you guys I was starting last time which is Lord of the Flies and it's it was my first time reading it since I read it in like elementary school or whenever and you know I kind of remembered like a few things but it was really hard like that was really devastating to read like it really got to me probably got to me a lot more than it did when I was a child reading it I'm sure a lot of the themes and things weigh a lot more heavily on me now that I'm a lot older and I was going to go between an old book that I've read before and a new book that I've never read before but I remembered that I have this on my shelf that I've been dying to reread uh, Walden 2, ignore my nail polishes, peeling and chipping, but Walden 2 by B.F. Skinner. I remember reading it in, I would say, junior year of high school. And I don't really remember too much about it, but I remember it being really interesting. So I wanted to reread that one. And then I'll get into one of my new ones, either I, Robot by Isaac Asimov. I have them back here that's why <laughs> that's why I'm pointing and also um either that or do androids dream of electric sheep one of those I'm really dying to get into but this one first and I'm a few chapters in really interesting so far really good stuff okay now let's get into some Star Trek thank you guys for being here and I hope you guys enjoy okay beaming down onto a planet we got Chekhov with us And the music is setting up something intense already. Like, this isn't just a normal survey. They said they were being attacked by an unidentified ship. Which we were unable to detect Oh, they said approach. they were being attacked. What in the world is this? 100 men, women, and children. Who did it? They look, Why? They look like they murdered a bunch of troll dolls to make those pink fronds in the back. <laughs> Sensors have picked up a Klingon ship. Closing <gasps> fast. The Klingons. Trouble aboard the Klingon ship. It's of explosions. Massive destruction. <laughs> He's like, excuse me, personal space. The enemy ship is drifting, totally disabled. And we never fired upon it. Maybe it was something else. <clears throat> oh, what the hell? A oh, hundred of my crew dead. <gasps> my ship is disabled. I claim yours. But you have committed a wanton act of war. It's always exciting when the Klingons arrive, but man, they are troublemakers. But this time it seems like a bit of a misunderstanding, but the Klingons are so, so like prideful and they don't like to talk things out that I don't think they're going to listen to anything we say when we tell them that it wasn't us. So there's some enemy that we have, like a common enemy that has attacked humans and Klingons, so ideally we would work together. We'll see where this goes. We took no action against your ship, Kang. What were your orders, Kirk? To start a war, you've succeeded. He looks like he has chocolate smeared all over his face. Federation ships don't specialize in sneak attacks. Is his face painted or is just he just really shiny? Sweaty. The Enterprise is mine! <laughs> Instruct your transporter room to beam us aboard. Go to the devil. Whoa! He said, go to hell! Stupid Klingon murderer! The 
to kill my brother, Peter. Peter? My brother, kill my brother. Volunteer to join him. That is loyalty. Oh. Stop the so he has a personal vendetta against the Klingons. His brother, Peter. I'll beam you aboard the Enterprise. Once there, no tricks. Don't let these animals have the ship. <clears throat> animals. Your captain crawls like one. A Klingon would never have surrendered. Don't think that Kirk has given up yet. Mr. Spock, we have guests. Beam up, everyone. Okay. He beamed up everybody. Did that thing hitch a ride? All security docks on the level. All others suspended in transit. Suspended in transit? Leave them where they are. Non-existence. That's so many less Klingon monsters in the galaxy. Dang, Chekhov. Bring them in. Liar! I said no tricks after we reached the ship. There are still survivors aboard my ship. There's too much radiation coming from that Klingon ship. It's a hazard to the vicinity. Prepare to destroy it. Completing the job you started? You wouldn't be standing here if I had. Oh, so they are... Okay, so they're beaming all the survivors from the Klingon vessel. My wife, Mara, and my science officer. Why did they just... Why did they paint everyone? Well, I've heard of their atrocities. They will torture us for our scientific and military information. It's really distracting. It's just not well done. But maintain general quarters. Scan this sector for other ship. We know what happened. A distress call. The Klingons were too far distant to have been the attackers. They also were apparently attracted by a distress call. Mm -hmm. They want to start the war by pretending that we did. No proof that the Klingons committed it. What proof do we need? We know what a Klingon is. Well, they haven't been too great in the past. Report. Still no contact with Starfleet Command, sir. Outside communications blanketed. What is this thing? Have Kirk's head stuffed and hung on his cabin wall. They will kill us before we can act. Four thousand throats may be cut in one night. Patience, vigilance. They will make their mistake. This doesn't make sense. Channels are open. There's still no outside contact. Oh, that's unlike her to react like that. Change of course. Accelerate. Override. Nothing response yet. So this thing is flying our ship now. And really quickly where are we going controls have gone crazy Sultan's taken over new course 902 mark 5 that'll take us out of the galaxy here we go again are we gonna cross that barrier for the mm, what third fourth time emergency bulkheads have closed almost 400 crewmen are trapped down there sir so like almost everybody the bulk of your crew trapped your ship racing from this galaxy how did I perform this sabotage, Kirk? All my men are here. Get down to security, search every section. Some Klingons may have beamed aboard undetected from the wrecked ship. And before I put you in the brig, there's a little something I owe you. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. That is fair. What the heck? Is this Trelane? <laughs> I feel like it's something Trelane would do. <laughs> Let's have them fight each other. It'll be grand. <laughs> And then the brains from Triskelion can wager their bets. <laughs> 400 Quatlus on the Klingons. <laughs> I don't know how to use this. I'm just good with my fists. I'll just punch him. <laughs> Blast this sword. <laughs> oh, sorry. This man is mortally wounded. I should probably... Take this more seriously. The Klingons are free. Armed as we are, they'll try and take the ship. Deploy forces to protect your section and the auxiliary control center. I think they can beat us with swords. Neither the Klingon technology nor ours is capable of this. Mm -hmm. I doubt that they are responsible. Would they not have used it to create more effective weapons only for themselves? Kip! Mr. Sekov, as you were. Take off, sir! Oh. He wants the blood. Personal score to settle with the Klingons. You're not thinking... Clearly. Back off, maintain your post. Don't try to stop me, Captain. I saw what they left of Pyotr. Well, these, I mean, okay, Chekhov, let's think about this. He never had a brother. He's an only child. 
Oh, someone's messing with their brains, too. Why would Chekhov believe he has a brother? Now he wants revenge for a non-existent loss. So what are you gonna do, little Chekhov, against all these big Klingons? There are rules, even in war. You don't keep hacking on a man after he's down. This is a really exciting episode. I just, I just wish that uh, at the end it would be like, it was Trelane the whole time. <laughs> Enemy numbers are the same as ours. We have a fighting balance. Then we take this ship. We must take these sections. First, engineering. There's no use trying to free those men down below. There's something happened to the metal. What about the armory? And you never saw such a Ooh. fine collection of antiques in your life. A claim. You're a beauty. <laughs> this is a fun episode. Our forces and those of the Klingons are exactly equal at 38 each. An evenly numbered to be more life energy units on board than can be accounted for Ooh. even numbers with the same weapons they're going for an evil e evil even match any signs of those devils mr Sewer? all clear mr scott is it just for the purpose of entertainment or something more whoa they're attacking oh no <laughs> scotty <laughs> Oh, the Sulu chop. They've taken engineering. It is an alien life force, a single entity. We must make contact. Find out what it wants. It wants a show. A brother that never existed. A phantom colony. Imaginary distress calls. We must talk to Kang. Bury the hatchet. Are you serious? I've got men in sick bay. Some of them dying. You talk about making peace with these fiends. This is a fight to the death. We'd better start trying to win it. There is an alien on board which may have created this situation. Who cares what started it, Mr. Spock? <laughs> We're in it. We should wipe out every one of them. How many more men must die before you two begin to act like military men? Military? That is not what the Enterprise is. So he thinks he's in some kind of military outfit. This is Kang. Kang, there's something important I must discuss with you. Now control the ship's power and life support systems. It will die from suffocation in the icy cold of space. It wasn't until the very end that Bones started seeming to be out of character because he's kind of always like yelling about stuff. <laughs> but when he said like, we have to murder them all and become military man, I'm like, okay, yeah, they got him. <laughs> We what? should have left those fuzz-faced goons in the transporter. Now they can study the Enterprise. You've jeopardized the Federation. Study, Mr. Scott. Keep your fucking hands off me, you green-blooded half-breed. May I say that I have not thoroughly enjoyed serving with humans? Then transfer out, freak! No! Oh. oh my Spock. goodness. Spock. They are even getting to Spock? Are we doing to each other? Fascinating. Are, are we all good? This is war. There isn't any war. Have we forgotten how to Charlie. defend ourselves? <laughs> He's ready to go. And why are we behaving like a group of savages? Two forces, each of them equally armed. Has a war been staged for us? Uh-huh. We seem to be pawns. But what's the game? And who's? And what are the rules? It is most urgent that we locate the alien entity immediately. Well, our tower down, this thing can go anywhere. And the Klingons are running loose too. Circuits are in, but systems just aren't responding. Power and life support restored. But Captain, I didn't do it. They want a bloody battle. They don't want people to just like die slowly from suffocation or whatever. Alien detected in the engineering section near reactor number three. I don't know if those swords are going to work against this thing. Oh, here comes Chekhov. Looking for his Klingons. You don't die yet. What are you? Beautiful. 
You're gonna wipe the chocolate off her face if you do that. <gasps> what is going on? Oh my god! It's not responsible. What have I done? Well, <laughs> I just don't. I don't know what to say right now. <laughs> There's a, an alien entity aboard the ship. <laughs> Listen to me. Take me to Kang. A temporary truce. That's all I ask. Spock, take her. Is this what's in store for us? Violence. Check out this so tiny. Hatred. Now, would you knock it off, little glowy disco ball? He's all right. He just had a little taste of the Kirk foo. You lost control. So did I. Johnson's heart wound is almost completely healed. The same with the other casualties. It would appear that the entity wants us alive. So we can fight and fight and keep coming back for more? Fight forever. Gentlemen, if we are pawns, you're looking at one who is extremely sorry. I, too, felt a brief surge of racial bigotry. Most distasteful. <laughs> I love how they always apologize and admit like when they were wrong like this show always has like these moments where it's like you know i was out of line whether it be because of some influence like this or otherwise what is it oh they can see it now what are you doing here reporting for duty sir get back to sick bay now in your life sir i'm fit and ready for action kill the cleons it's never us isn't it Dozen. <laughs> Thank you, Spock. Fascinating. The alien's life energy level increased. So it feeds off of this. It subsists on the emotions of others. Appears to be strengthened by mental radiations of hostility. It exists on the hate of others. And it has acted as a catalyst, creating the situation. Mm -hmm. So we do, do we give everybody the happy shot again? We've got to get rid of it. Then all hostile attitudes on board must be eliminated. The fighting must end. Well, it's kind of hard when this thing is making everybody crazy. Kang, you're in me. Commander, it's a trick! Oh, lady, come on. You've seen this creature. Soon it will become so powerful that none of us will be able to resist it. We need the happy shots, like Wolf in the Fold. In 12 minutes, we'll be totally without engine power. Well, do whatever you can. Stick up. <laughs> oh man too many things going on at once so we drift in space with only hatred and bloodshed aboard now do you believe so this thing has is pretty much trying to like make it so they can't go anywhere so they'll just drift in space aimlessly forever fighting or almost killing each other and then being revived there's no change captain the dilithium crystals are discharging I could talk to Kang. Kang's wife is, after all, our prisoner. Perhaps a threat. No, that's something the Klingons would understand. Kang, we have Mara, your wife. Talk truce now, or she dies. Reply. She is a victim of war, Captain. That's cold. He called my bluff. You're not going. The Federation doesn't kill or mistreat its prisoners. You've been listening to propaganda. So this was no trick. We only wanted to stop the fighting to save us all. We are hunters, Captain. Tracking and taking what we need. Yeah, but I'm sure you would like to do it on your own terms. We must push outward if we are to survive. There's another way to survive. Mutual trust and help. Yeah, that trust is the hard part, though. I will take you to Kang. I will add my voice to yours. I wouldn't trust her, Captain. How can they trust us if we can't trust them? No other option. Intraship beaming. From one section to another, it's possible. She may be leading you into a trap. We're all in a trap. This is the only way out. I believe her. This is a big gamble, though. But she can't guarantee that Kang will stop to listen. True. No one can guarantee the actions of another. Mm -hmm. Very wise words, Spock. Yeah, better leave that behind. Okay, better hurry up, though. The clock is ticking. <laughs> nice computations. Bring a surprise. Can wait. Listen to him. Oh no. We're all in danger. Don't. What have they done to you, Mara? They didn't harm me. 
Well, <laughs> okay. Now we're f sword fighting. But Kirk seems to be more defensive than anything else. We win. Nobody wins. There's an alien aboard. Oh, man. Here comes everybody with their swords. <laughs> this is the aliens getting exactly what it wants. <laughs> I was thinking I wanted to see a bit more sword fighting in this episode. And I got it. Fighting. Voila. An alien has total control over us. All right. In the heart, in the head. I won't stay dead. I mean, how do you know that it can revive you no matter what? Well, somewhere, some thing sits back and laughs and starts it all over again. Listen to Kirk. He is telling the truth. Oh, be a toy. Be a good soldier that never questions orders. They're unskilled for their own purposes. This is Captain Kirk. A truce is ordered. Lay down your weapons. This is Kang. Cease hostilities. Good job, everyone. Good spirits might make an effective weapon. Let's all have a party! Get off my ship. You're a dead duck here. You're powerless. We know about you. So ship out! Come on, haul it! Uh, out already! <laughs> out! We need no urging to hate humans. We need no urging to hate humans. We hate them already! <laughs> <laughs> Bye! What a strange episode. So, Day of the Dove, the day where the humans of the Federation and the Klingons came upon a truce to uh, fight back against this uh, alien creature. This one was okay. It wasn't, like, one of my favorites. I didn't super dislike it. The makeup on the Klingons was a little bit weird. The crew acting out and wanting to fight and then fighting amongst each other and calling each other like just really hurtful things. I feel like we've seen it before and I didn't need a whole episode of that, I guess. I thought the premise was really interesting though. I feel like as opposed to seeing so much fighting between the crew like amongst themselves or saying that they wanted to go kill Klingons, I would have liked to see maybe... Wouldn't it be cool if both sides, like, really, before they figured out what was going on, took their 38 people on each side and organized them, and we saw, like, some tactics and some really cool strategies and things like that. I don't know, I just feel like something could have made this a little bit more interesting and maybe paced like the flow of the episode go a little bit better, maybe be a little bit more excited because the sword fights that we did get were really cool, but they seemed kind of haphazard and like some random people just kind of going out and fighting instead of like a really tactical like confrontation. I don't know. <laughs> I do think it's cool how at least these specific Klingons maybe learned a little bit more about the humans and we kind of heard about the propaganda that the Klingons are being fed by their superiors or whoever against the human federation so that they continue to fight the humans without question. And I think her being able to trust them and them being able to trust her, the, the Klingon wife of Kang, and for them to be able to work together at the end and laugh with each other. That was really cool. I really liked that. So yeah, in conclusion, this was a pretty good episode. Not gonna be in my top rankings, but you know, pretty solid. I liked Kang as uh, an antagonist. He was pretty cool. The actor did very well. I would have liked to see more of him in the episode, but yeah. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and thank you guys for watching. Hope you had a good time and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.